Hi, welcome to this answers video. In the previous lesson, we discussed how to create a pressure based touchscreen panel using strain gauges, a large data set, and an ML algorithm. In this lesson, we would take it a step further and try to model this using PyMAPDL. By utilizing PyMAPDL, we can harness its capabilities to generate physics to inform data sets for MLAI applications. So, in this lesson, we would try to model the touchscreen model using PyMAPDL and learn some new Python and APDL commands along the way. Ready? Let's get started. Before starting, let's take a minute to imagine the process of modeling the touchscreen model we discussed in the previous lesson. To begin, we would start by creating the screen geometry and then discretize it to establish the finite element model. Next, we would introduce a loading point that simulates the load generated when the screen is touched. And finally, we would strategically paste the data points throughout the mesh screen model to extract the strain data. By following these steps, we can effectively capture the behavior of the touchscreen and obtain valuable strain information from various locations on the model. This data will be crucial for further analysis and implementing machine learning algorithm in our application. In our touchscreen model, it is important to ensure that the location of the tensor points remains constant. And we want to ensure that a node exists at the load location. To achieve this, we can utilize hard points. Hard points are special key points defined using specific coordinates, making them unaffected by changes in mesh refinement or geometry. By utilizing hard points, we can maintain consistency in the model and accurately retrieve results from the defined sensor points throughout the analysis. To store the coordinates of the hard points, we can use Python dictionary type. A dictionary in Python is a versatile container that can hold an arbitrary number of objects, including other containers. It is composed of pairs known as items, consisting of keys and their associate values. Each key value pair is separated by a colon, and multiple items within the dictionary are separated by commas. The entire dictionary is enclosed within a curly bracket. So in our model, we can define the sensor locations using coordinates, and we would write it as sensors equals to curly bracket x1 and the coordinate value. Similarly, we can write it for other coordinates value with a key value pair. To define the hard points on the area at the sensor locations, we can utilize a for loop to iterate over the key value pair. Within the loop, we can create a hard point using the x and y coordinate to specify the location of the touch screen model. Since this model is in x and y plane, all these z coordinates are zero. So in our dictionary, each hard point is represented by two entries, one for the x coordinate and one for the y coordinate. This means that the dictionary's length is always twice the number of hard points. To determine the proper range, we start at one and end at one more than the half of the dictionary's length. When using hard point create command, you define a hard point specifying the area and the x and y coordinates. In this case, the screen panel area number is 1, since it's the only area in the model. This approach provides an efficient way to define the sensor locations and later retrieve result data from the model. When solving for the strain at the gauge locations for the synthetic data set, the set of nodes not on the lines nor on the sensors will be used as the applied load input locations. We then need to save this list of x and y node locations for later use. We could use the Python CSV module to write a comma separated file of the x and y location. Or as we have done here, just use the native Python with appropriate characters as shown. Since we now understand the concepts used in the code, let's go back and review it in order. As of now, all we need from this code is the list of x and y locations to apply the load. In the model and so we do not need to save the mapdl model files so the command remove temp dir can be used to clean up the files and folders that mapdl creates during the run the touchscreen dimensions are stored in variables and the sensor locations in a dictionary as we discussed in the earlier part of this video we then enter the prep 7 module and create the touchscreen area using blc4 command where 0 comma 0 is the origin and this last zero defines the depth. 
We then delete the area to only retain the lines and then add fillets to the corners using the L fillet command. Now the touchscreen area is bounded by these lines and can be filled using the command mapdl.al. But before that, let's clear unused numbering used by the area using the command numcmp. Following this, we define the sensor locations on the touchscreen area. As discussed earlier, using the for loop on the dictionary variable with sensor coordinates. We also define the element type as shell to it one, which is a four node shell element. Since we are not solving the model, the material properties and thickness of the shell do not necessarily need it to be defined here. But we do so as we will reuse this code in the model we will create in the next lesson to solve for the strain at the gauge locations. Now, let's define the finite element mesh parameters using this MAPDL commands. Set the element type to 2D triangle shape element with an element size of 0.05 units and mesh the model. Okay, let's get and save the needed data from this model. The nodes associated with the outer edge of the screen area are unselected as this will be held fixed in the next model. So we do not want to apply load to them. Similarly, we unselect the nodes at the gauge locations. The node coordinates are stored to a numpy array by using this command line, with each row containing the x, y and z coordinates respectively. Since the z coordinates of the model are all equal, we can ignore them. So we only have to save the first and the second value from the array, representing the x and y coordinates. And this last part of the code, as we discussed earlier, is to write the CSV file in Python. And with this, we can exit our MAPDL instance. To recap, we have created a mesh finite element model of a touchscreen panel using 2D elements. Then we stored the coordinate data of the touchscreen nodes in a CSV file using file writing operation in Python. In the next lesson, we will use this model as a starting point to gather the strain gauge data given load at these locations. And we have about 9000 load points we will implement PyME PDL pools to speed up the processing of all these models. I hope you find this video helpful. See you in the next lesson.